Hey, what's good, everybody? Um, I am doing an update to an older video that I did some years back on showing you how to import drums into Logic similar to FL Studio. Um, some people emailed me and said, hey, can you do it in um, Logic Pro 10? And I was like, okay, cool. And I'm just not getting uh, some time to, to do it. Um, so now we're in Logic Pro 10. Um, I'm going to show you how to import drums similar to FL Studio because just like with FL, you know, you can go through and just pick the sound you want, throw it in there, and it's ready to go, and it goes all the way up and down the key ranges, and you have to set just a very few parameters to get it where you need to be. Unlike Logic, uh, when I first started using Logic, I had to use the ES24 sampler, and I would have to find the sound either using going through Logic or going outside of Logic and find the sound importing the sound then having to set the key range for the sound then have to uh, let it know if it's going to be a one shot or not and then save the sound and then I will have to save it in some folder somewhere in the system and it's just got just too much stuff so basically I found a way to do it so much faster light years faster than that and it's by using native instruments contact um, I believe you can do the same thing in contact player um, I don't know, I've never used this, but, you know, just get your contact. This will save your life on Logic, trust me, because you can audition all the sounds inside of Logic, and your workflow will be so much better because you won't be losing ideas trying to do all the extra stuff. You can just make your beat and go. So um, I already have an instance of contact already pulled up. Um, well, I don't have it pulled up. I already have it in here, so let me pull it up. And I already have a kick drum already in here. Um, and basically, if you want to find sounds inside of here, you want to find your sounds that you want to use, your third-party sounds. Um, most of the time, you open up Logic, you use Logic with your libraries. But what you do is you go to Files right here. And you just go to wherever you saved it, uh, your, your drums at. And I saved mine on my desktop. So as you can see, um, desktop, bolo drums, they got all my drums. And then um, I have my auto on. It's the way you can audition the sounds. And I want to find a kick drum. So let me go right here. And once you click on that folder, it shows you everything in the folder right underneath here. So it doesn't matter if I go to percussions. It doesn't matter if I go whatever snaps, sound fonts. Um, it's cool. I'll show you how to use sound fonts and logic later on. But you, you know, super easy with that too. So let's go to kicks. Okay. I like that one, which I already have, but swing it in. Okay, so when you have a sound, all you got to do is, when you find the sound, even if this is blank, you just find the sound and just swing it right into the empty screen, and there you go. And it goes all the way up and down the octave. Without having to set nothing. And the good part about it is contact only uses what you put into it. So if the kick drum right here is only 39 kilobytes, that's all it's using. So it doesn't um, take up more of your, you know, memory to use it. So you can use a thousand instances of this contact. As, <laughs> as long as it's not using up your memory, you're fine. So let's do it uh, in the context of making a song. So let me... Do a small short pattern here. Have my quantize turned on. I like to record with my quantize on so everything can just snap into place. Um, BPM 120. So let's go ahead and record. Okay, cool. Oh. The quick key to record, just press R. That's the quick key to record. Side note. Okay, so let's add a snare to that. So I just copy the instance of a contact to another track. And we go into it. And since I copied it, it's going to have the kick still pulled up because I copied the same thing. So uh, let me add a snare. Actually, let me add a snap. 
Okay, that snap sounds pretty good. Let me slide that in there. Okay. And basically, if you did have another sound, doesn't matter if you have another sound in there, you can take whatever sound and just slide it right on top of it. And it just changes to that sound. But I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to slide that right there. And cool. So let's add that. Okay, cool. If the uh, audio quality is not that good, my bad. I'm not mixing nothing right now. I'm just basically showing y'all something. So for all the people that's going to say, oh, the audio quality is this, that, whatever, it's not about that. I'm just basically showing you how to use the instrument. Um, and you know, some of these audio recording programs, these video recording programs, it's real hot. So sometimes it comes out a little messed up, but this is only just for showing purposes only so don't kill me y'all okay cool so we got the snare in there so now let's add an instrument new track um let me add like a piano something in here let me add let me use es24 sampler and go in here and use and as you can see i got some files in here but it's, it's a long time ago don't use them anymore at all. It just takes so long. So let's use an instrument. And I'm adding this instrument for a reason so I can show people how to tune their their basses, um, the 808s. So let's do it in the key of C. Ooh, that's loud. Let me turn that down. It's real short, so. Okay, it's real short, but, you know, producers, we try to produce all the time, but never mind that. So let's go ahead and uh, add a bass. So it's in the key of C, so let me add a bass to it, and let me add a bass that's not tuned correctly. Um, so let me go ahead and add another instance of contact. And let me pick a bass that I know it's not tuned right. Let's go to basses. Let's use this. Okay, so basses. Real simple. Same way you import it in. So easy. So with basses, you don't want them to bleed into each other. Basically meaning that when you play two notes, one note triggers and cuts the other note off so it won't be two different basses playing against each other because if you don't do that you have the bass bleed over and doesn't sound good so to stop that what you got to do is you got to turn the max you know what I'm saying the max voice is all the way down to one and what that does is um, it only can play one note at a time so even if I play one note and I play the next note automatically cuts that note so whatever note hits first that's the one it's going to use cool now a contact with basses if i hold the bass down on the keyboard it plays all the way out but if i let it go quickly it goes like that there's no release there's no tail to it if you want to do that go to settings And go down here um, to where you can set your um, like your, um, your your different uh, releases, sustains, and all that stuff down here. So, as you know, to make the bass hold longer, you want to turn up the release. So if I let it go, it does that. But if I turn the release up and I let it go, it does this. Mm. Now, 
The thing about this bass that's a little different is that this bass is out of tune. So when I hit C on here, it's not actually C, it's in like another key. So when I play it with the piano, it's not right. Okay, so I know this bass is out of key, so I want to make sure that I pitch in the right key. I myself know that this bass is pitched uh, four um, semitones down. So let me pitch it four semitones up so that it'll be in the key of C when I hit the key of C. So let's do it. So I got in the key of C. Sounds good. So that's how you tune your kick, your uh, basses, your kicks, your snares, whatever you want to tune. You just hit this tune button and you just go. You just try to find it. So there we go. We're gonna use that and let me add that in. And there it is. That's how you import drums into Logic, similar to FL. You see how easy it is. Say, for instance, if I want to add any other sound like that in there, and instead of me fooling around trying to find the parameters, like say, for instance, I want to add some percussion to it. Here, rim shot. Just slide it right on in. Here. So got everything in there, everything is separated on their own individual track and Look at that, how to import drums into Logic Pro 10, similar to FL Studio. Streamlined, quick, easy, just light years better than using the ES24 sample or any other sampler that's, that comes in here. Um, you can do it in battery as well, it takes a little longer, but contact is the way to go for any type of sampling, chopping up samples, whatever you want to do, contact is the way to go. So. Um, make sure if I went too fast, make sure you go look at my other video that I did a couple years ago. It's made in Logic Pro 9, so it looks a little different, but it's the same process. If you have any comments, please comment. Please like the video and please subscribe. Tell a friend and tell a friend to come see me. And uh, I'm going to start putting up more videos like this. So if you got any videos you want me to do, let me know and I'll try to get to it. All right, peace out.